What's going on fellow stacker collectors? Silver Wolves here back in the den. I am visiting some relatives in New York. I have also stopped by an old friend of mine, a high school buddy. Haven't seen in quite a while. <clears throat> um, growing up together, I never knew that he was a serious coin collector. Started at seven years old. He's standing next to me right now. We have such a treat for you, man. We got a lot of old classic pneumatic coins. Uh, we're going to start off with some Morgans. We're going to move on to Seated Liberties and a little special treat, something I'm not too familiar with. And what my buddy here is very knowledgeable. He, uh, currency, old, old uh, U.S. currency that we're going to take a, awesome, awesome, just imagery and so forth. So um, we're going to start with the uh, Morgans and here we go. So Mike, why don't you step on over? Yeah, come on. Glad to be on the channel. Thanks for inviting me. To talk about all this fun stuff, um, the coin that you're holding there is, you know, it's it's kind of it's, it's a modern issue. This is something that I wanted to throw in and share with folks. Um, you may or may not have seen this, but it's I kind of like it because it's what a Morgan dollar would have looked like a hundred years ago, the day it was struck. This is the these new um, late model, so to speak, Morgans that were being restruck. Uh, here in the 21st century, and this is a 2020-21 uh, strike of just a sort of, you know, a, a throwback to the era when this was the circulating silver dollar coin, and it's a mint state 70. This is, you know, a flawless coin that got graded and encapsulated while it was still completely untouched, and I just, I don't know, I kind of like it. I mean, I'm into classic coins, but this modern version is just a Blessed from the past, what it would have looked like if we lived a hundred years ago. And we showed this one first because we wanted to give you guys a comparison of uh, the, the original Morgan dollars. Yeah, it's sort of nice, nice, you know, uncirculated example from back in the classic day, and uh, you know, so with with some nice toning too. You know, I, I like to to collect old Morgans from the original era in the late nineteenth century that have dramatic toning and you know not just sporadic but you know something with, with uniformity to it and this is a nice example of one jim's going to pull it out of the out of the bag here you can get it close actually look. we'll um want to keep it in yeah we're going to keep that in and pull out the next one. Oh yeah that's a good idea where you see this so it's kind of a niche category at this point but i think it's starting to become popular to collect um uncirculated and well-toned morgans morgans that have uh, natural toning, none, none of the synthetic stuff, none of the trickery, just beautiful old toning that took place that took you know many decades to happen. And this is a fun example, the one that Jim is holding, because the toning exists mainly on the reverse of the coin. And so PCGS decided that they wanted to feature the, the reverse side of the coin on the front of the holder. So it's just a little way of them telling you that you know, this is the focal point of the coin. Check this out. It's very cool. There's a, there's, there's a reason why this is numismatically important, and it's because of the reverse. And just the beauty. The, it's the, you know, the way that these, these tones, these coins get that iridescent toning, it just happens very slowly over time. Okay, not, not to interrupt you, but I do see some scratches going across the, across the breast there. Oh, yeah, that could be. The cone of the 64, that's probably what prevents it from being um, a gem, you know, a 65 or higher. And... Just a fun thing. And, that, and again, you know, this is a coin, kind of coin you pay a premium on for the toning alone, regardless of the grade. This is the uh, second one? Yeah, this is another one that um, Same. Has, a, it has an interesting aspect to the toning. It shows how a coin can tone, depending on how it's stored. It doesn't necessarily tone completely across the face. Here's one that has um, toning that sort of ended halfway across, and that probably has a lot to do with what it was up against, maybe maybe it was an envelope, maybe it was stored in, in an interesting way, and the toning just ended halfway through. So, yeah, it's a beautiful coin, man. These details, I know, I love them. When yeah. I find these things with certain dealers, and sometimes with auctions, I, I, I jump on them. And again, you know, if you wanted to collect things like this, there's there's definitely a, a premium to pay for for the toning because people chase these things, and there'll be an, an comp, a bit of competition. This one almost looks like a thumbprint right there on the side. Oh, yeah, very likely. When you, when you see something like that, there's a, 
there's a section on the coin on a tone coin that just doesn't have any toning in that spot often it's because the chemicals from somebody's finger may have touched it huh. decades or even a century ago and prevented the uh, the acids killed the toning you, you got it so and it, a tone coin has you know it, it has a story to tell but we'll never quite know what that story is because you'd have to have witnessed the whole process over a long period of time so that's the, the mystery is what i kind of like about these two right. we picked um quite a few morgans <laughs> Uh, we knew this was going to be a little tough to get through, as in timing. Um, but I'm sure you guys are enjoying this. These are some awesome looking Morgans. Uh, again, my my knowledge of these particular coins do not match my buddies here. Yeah, they're just you know they're it, kind of fun. I, I have some knowledge about the coins and you know a little bit about. I, what I mean, you started when you, are, but you started when you were seven. It started pretty early on, and and believe it or not. My, it was, it was paper money that got me into numismatics, but my very first numismatic items in my possession were actually coins, and you know, they were they were circulatable, circulatable coins, so to, so to speak, um, and not coins that were very valuable, but just interesting to me because they were different, mm -hmm. you know, for, 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 coins from other countries other than the U.S. That's what really, really grabbed me. And Morgan's, yeah, are the more. Uh, most collectible coin, I believe, in the world. Yeah, and it's it, it's fascinating too. And for for a while, there were not a lot of Morgans really to be collected until a huge hoard were were released um, in the mid twentieth century at one point. And it's where a lot of the collectible ones that are in the market today came from. They're not necessarily you know passed down from our great great grandparents. They they entered the market. Um, as un uncirculated coins directly from the mint um, many decades after they were issued or struck, I should say. And here we go. There you go. There's, there's one of the, the show pieces. The CC. So, you know, Carson City, as a lot of you would be familiar with, is, is the, there were far fewer of them struck, and so they're much harder to find, and they do fetch a premium for that reason. And this is my favorite and one of my only examples of a Carson City Morgan. And it's a beautiful... Yeah, 65 you don't see too often. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that was... That, I think that's what made me pull the trigger on that one. Well, at least here, I mean, I don't see too many working 65s on YouTube channels and so forth uh -huh. with, with CAC on it. Um, Good point. Yeah, that's one of my only uh, it's, CAC certified coins too. I'm pretty sure many like yourself that are unknown to the world that people actually do own these particular type of coins um we're gonna we had to throw one gold piece in here yeah this is fun this is um as you may know is a saint gaudens 20 dollar double eagle this is an earlier issue it's the second year that it was struck 1908 um, and i think it was the last time that it had no motto so in other words no way in god we trust motto on on the uh on the reverse and this is a raw example, and this is a coin that came from my father's collection, and it may very well be the coin that, that, that stirred up my reinterest in coin collecting as an adult when I finally inherited this coin. And I wanted to show it to you folks, and I wanted to show it to Jimmy as well, just to give an idea of what it feels like to hold a, a, a raw example of a of a St. Gaudens in your hand and just feel the weight of it without... without I was, I was just going to mention that. The, the, the weight is unique. It feels like an ounce. Yeah, yeah. It's just, there's something about it. Like when you're holding um, gold in your hand... What, what, uh, yeah. do, do you know the gold content? The... Gold content on these? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it was 90%. About the... Uh, how many grams? How gold? many grams? But they call it a troy ounce. Oh, it so is an ounce. It's, it's an ounce of gold. Um, oh, okay. So it's 31.10348. Yeah, I, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> See, I know something, buddy. But when it's inside yeah. of a PCGS holder, it's more than that, and so it sort of throws you off as to you know what this coin really. Oh yeah, like but you, you, yeah, you should definitely know the uh, yeah. the the weight of gold. Yeah, um, things, they, they want circulated, so that's what keeps it fascinating. This used to be spent as money, and so people, our our ancestors knew what it felt like to have the weight of gold in their hands, where today we tend to. Um, we, we fetishize it a little bit when we, when we slab them, but it's important mm. to preserve them. True. Yes. The artifacts of the past. So, yeah, some other uh, offbeat categories of, 
of uh, collectibles. This certainly fits into that. And this is copper or hard? This is it's, it's an old it's a copper. I don't know if it's copper or bronze. I've, I've forgotten. I have to research this one more. It's a coin that I've admired <clears throat> for a long time, and I finally was able to acquire one. And it features Washington. It's um it's from the the um seventeen ninety five late eighteenth century, and it's. This is, there was a version of this coin, there was a particular specimen of it that was said to have been carried by George Washington in his pocket for many years toward the end of his life when they first um, developed the coin and struck it and they presented him with one and that very coin was recently auctioned. And this is, again, without evidence that it was Washington's coin, but that it was very hmm. likely his coin it auctioned for a very high price. Huh. And this is a sort of... Uh, Do you know the price? Or? Oh, I think it was a seven-figure price. Wow. And so here's my affordable, realistic example to have for myself. He has a nice scar on his cheek there. I wonder if that's... The, is that the coin itself? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe Washington had a scar on his face mm-hmm. after the war, man. Nobody ever told us. It doesn't show up on the $1 bill. I promise you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys get, can't wait to see these... Um, <laughs> Uh, currency. It's incredible. Oh, yeah. When the currency comes up, definitely check out that video because we have some fun things to show you. you and if you go, if you want to skip to that part, I'm going to put chapters into this video. So, yeah, the coins in the beginning, uh, chapter two w- will be the currency. There's a fun little uh, uh, type of coin that didn't circulate for very long because not very many were struck. It was short-lived because of the denomination. It's a 20-cent coin. And... Folks realized before long that that was sort of an impractical um, denomination, and it just sort of fell out of favor and disappeared forever, almost completely forgotten. If it weren't for these specimens that still exist, um, we, we would probably not know about these coins. So this has circulated. Yeah, this, is, yep. this has been circulated. I think it's at AU and okay. San Francisco. Yeah, fun, AU fun little 50. thing. If ever you see. 20 cent piece and it's price realistically grab one because I think that they're currently undervalued and oh by the way guys I'm saving the best for last so if uh, you stick around you can see some awesome I'm going to give you a little hint seated liberties yeah there's some bad boys coming up this however mm-hmm. is uh, this, this is a quarter it's a 25 cent piece and standing liberty one. standing liberty and it gets the the FH, which which means full head. That's a designation that is, um, that shows that it was struck. It was among the very few that were well struck enough that the entire head of liberty is visible. Although on this particular example, since it's so heavily toned around the edges, it takes um, it, it takes it a little it, it, uh, an advanced uh, an advanced an enhanced um, viewfinder to really notice that. That it's a full head. And so that's another reason why it's important to have these things certified uh, and slabbed because it'll give you the, the information. That you yeah, need. I'm trying to see because it's so dark up there. I'm trying to see if I could get it in the camera view. It's tricky, right? I, I, yeah. I used a loop on it once to take a look, and that was the only way I could really um, confirm to myself that it, mm. it truly is a full head. All right, now for my favorite. Oh yeah, what is this bad boy? Yeah, the Sea oh, of Liberty is... They're, they're rare. They're, 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 they're tough to find in this particular uh, condition. And toning. Yeah, I love the grayish so, uh, silver toning. That toning attracted me to this coin right away. I, I knew I wanted a Sea of Liberty, but I didn't want to just settle for you know a coin that I was not in love with, just simply to add one to my collection. So I held out, and I, I, I discovered this with... Um, with a certain auction house and I I went for it because it was just an unbelievably originally toned coin um, it's almost proof like is it proof like um, yeah uh, proof this is PR. It's, a, it's an actual proof coin yep and um, there's not there's just so much to say about a coin like this because yeah <laughs> this is it's, clearly held on to by by a number of different folks over over generations so it's cac 60 uh 66 plus so it could be 67 or 68 is that what they're saying yeah when i put a 66 plus on there i think what they're saying is that um this is a coin that that could qualify for a higher grade and some folks who when when, when they have a coin like this with a plus grade on it they'll often resubmit it to a different grading service 
to see if they can actually get the higher mm -hmm. grade on there. Um, but it definitely is an accolade, you know, a plus grade. You know, I, I think it's a fair grade for this coin. Yeah, and, I... and, and CAC definitely agrees. They, they added a sticker to it. Just for shits and giggles, I'll say 68. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love to get that regraded re to 68. Problem is, then it would it, it would be worth so much more that I'd be tempted to sell it. But. Hmm. So this is what do we have here? We oh, have yeah. fifty eight AU has been circulated. Here's the fun coin exactly, and I don't you know coins like this. I don't often like to buy any lower than uh, uncirculated grade, but again, I was won over by the toning. I guess I'm kind of a, a fan of, of toning, and but but good toning and, and and original toning. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Colorful toning, you know, the Morgans, they tend to show a lot of colorful toning, but coins like this, they had that more, um, that more antique look to them, that, that antique toning, and the way it shows up on this AU, um, to me, it doesn't matter that it's an, that it's antique is a, gr is a great way to describe Morgans. I right. think that's why many Americans, even worldwide, collect them. They have a very unique, like, beginning and they were circulated quite extensively throughout the world like a lot of people that use them not just in the oh, united states time, right so it's kind of like a it's an antique of our past like antiques are something pleasant to look at something unique um like going to an antique shop or whatever but yes yeah, the antique of the coin world so to speak yeah, I don't know. exactly and that's i think that's a, the reason why they're so they're so renowned and, and just so widely collected all right Let's see, we're on uh, 16 minutes here. This is, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. Got another good one here. This is the last coin before we get into the currency. And uh, yeah, let's, let, let's hear the history on this fellow. Oh yeah, so this is my one barber or, coin. Miss. This is a, um, a barber half. And for a long time, you know, I, this is the coin that took me the longest to, to, to acquire because I wanted to be a little bit picky about barber dollars. I mean, uh, barber half dollars rather. They, this is, the design itself is considered to be an ugly duckling. You know, this is Liberty. The first time I saw this coin in books when I was a kid, I always thought that that was a man on the front. Um, and this, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's a very masculine depiction of Liberty. It's packed. It just doesn't have a lot of elegance to it. And even, even the reverse of the coin, the design itself, it's just kind of, um, you know, it's a utilitarian look. And so I said, geez, you know, I can't have a collection that doesn't have a barber half dollar in it and so I held out for one that I just really liked the look of you know it had to be something that was uncirculated um, uh, something that faces up for the grade and this is an example of that um, you know again a coin probably one of the only coins in my collection the um, that, that I'm not crazy about the design of but I certainly like the specimen that I found and so yeah the, the ugly duckling you'll see there, there are a lot of articles out there so that agree with me on that this is the ugly duckling of the collectible world? I or? think so. Yeah, I, I've read at least two articles that refer to the barber. The, the, the barber design, period, you know, is also the 25 cent pieces. And it's just a smaller coin with the same design. And, you know, nothing special. Okay. Always... Okay, fellas, we are going to uh, take a little break here and get set up for the currency that I have before you. Uh, we have a few notes to look at. And uh, please stay tuned.